Good morning, Father Jeff Henry here at St. Michael Catholic Community at Travis Air Force Base. I'm sheltering in place in my garage right now. Somebody's got to be here. And what I'd like to do with you today is look over our first lesson from today's Mass readings. And it has to deal with the whole story of the bronze serpent. Perhaps you remember that story. It's where God, it said, as it puts it, it's uh, basically God is not human like we are like we are God the Father, but we anthropomorphize God so that people can understand him. So it says God got angry. He got angry at the Israelites. Why did he get angry? Well, let's take a look and see. It says in Romans chapter 21, from Mount, from Mount Hor, the children of Israel set out on the Red Sea Road to bypass the land of Edom, but with their patience, Worn out by the journey, the people complained against God and Moses. Why have you brought us up from Egypt to die in this desert where there is no food or water? We are disgusted with this wretched food. Kind of interesting. There's no food, but the food they do get, they don't like. They're almost a, it's almost like that child thing where they don't want to eat their beans. They want to eat the candy and the ice cream. They're not satisfied. And so they start complaining. And so it says here, in punishment, God, the Lord, rather, sent among the people seraph or poisonous serpents, which bit the people, so that many of them died. Then the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned in complaining against the Lord and you. Pray the Lord to take the serpents away from us. So Moses prayed for the people, and the Lord said to Moses, Make a seraph and mount it on a pole, and whoever looks at it after being bitten will live. Moses accordingly made a bronze serpent and mounted it on a pole, and whenever anyone who had been bitten by a serpent looked at the bronze serpent, he lived. What is that to do with our faith and in, in Christianity? Uh, in our gospel today, Jesus says, uh, When you have lifted up the Son of Man... It's that same sort of comment. He puts it this way. Very, very interesting. When you lift up the Son of Man, then you will realize that I am and that I do nothing on my own. In other words, what Jesus is doing, and he does it in other places as well, he relates his own experience, his own mission to that serpent being raised on a pole. Now, with the serpent being up there, it's almost what it reminds me of, of his inoculations. You ever gotten a flu shot or a measles shot? What you are given is a strain of something, a bacterium or, or, a, or a virus that's, that's been denatured or weakened, and it builds your resistance to it. It's like through, through the poison of an object, we receive our redemption. And isn't that true really for us as well? Uh, we, in a sense, metaphorically speaking, we died in the garden with Adam and Eve when they, when they ate the fruit. It says, uh, the one way of looking at it, one way it's been described, I read once that said that the serpent bit Adam in the garden when he ate the fruit. So there's a seraph serpent and yet the hope is still the same. So what we have instead is, well, instead of, of course, there being a serpent man on a pole in this, this story of, of dying physically, what we have is our Lord Jesus Christ mounted on a cross that whoever looks to him and believes in him, as it said in the gospel lesson, will be saved. Let me read something to you. This is amazing. This is out of 2 Corinthians. Listen to what St. Paul says of the Lord Jesus Christ. This is 1 Corinthians chapter 5. Now then, we are, amb we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God were pleading through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. Now listen. For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God. It's as if Jesus was bitten by that serpent on the cross. It is, in fact, it says in Genesis chapter one, uh, when it speaks of this, the son of, of the of the woman, the son of Eve. It says 
regarding the devil, the serpent, it says, you sh he shall crush your head, devil, serpent. He shall crush your head, but you shall crush his heel. So Jesus is wounded on the cross, but in so doing, he destroys the death, the devil, and he destroys, destroys death. Death dies on the cross. It's as if Jesus took that sin in into himself. He became sin for us, as it were. He mounted all our sin, and through this inoculation of the cross, we are given new life. That's hope. That's exciting. That's comfort. That's this realization that we now have nothing to fear. Neither death, nor life, nor principalities, nor anything else in this world will ever separate us from the love of God, because he who knew no sin became sin for us. And whenever we look to Jesus, when we're feeling bad about ourselves, or we look at the situation of the world, or our country, and our city, or whatever it is, when we, we look at feel almost despair, and it's just so much sadness, we look at that cross, and we realize all of a sudden that that is the means by which we are brought back to life. That's the means by which we have hope because God has laid on Jesus the sins of us all and set us free. I'd like to say a prayer for you. I forgot yesterday when we did this. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we pray that we might look to Christ, the one who rose, died and rose again for us. And as we look to him, may we receive the life he offers. We make our prayer through our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Just by way of taking care of a little business, I have been receiving a, a lot of inter interest in having a virtual Bible study. Probably go on Zoom. And if you are interested, please uh, email us. Amen. God bless you. Keep the faith. Keep trusting the Lord. God is bigger than all these things we're having to go through right now, and he will meet all of our needs. Peace be with you.